Hello, this is Sarah Brash, and this is my talk for my paper, Heart's Fatal Mistake in the Concept of Law and How to Fix It, for Social Ontology 2021. So I'm going to begin by discussing some features of Hart's legal theory and the concept of law that will be pertinent. So in the concept of law, HLA Hart crafts a legal, a theory of legal systems as the union of primary duty imposing social rules of obligation and secondary power conferring social rules of authority. So what makes a social rule a legal rule for Hart is the fact that it's part of this system of social rules. These duty imposing social rules of obligation, which are the primary social rules, and the power conferring social rules of authority, which are the secondary uh, social rules that piggyback on top of the primary social rules. So a social rule becomes a legal rule for Hart because it is part of this system of social rules. That is why, that is what comprises a legal system, that is how social rules become legal rules for Hart. So the social group whose legal system it is confers authority upon the public officials of the legal system to promulgate, change, and adjudicate the primary duty imposing social rules of obligation. So it's the secondary social rules, uh, power conferring social rules of authority that confer power upon the public officials to then adjudicate, to promulgate, and to change the primary duty imposing social rules of obligation. So it's important to understand that. And these primary duty imposing social rules of obligation are the social rules of the social group whose legal system it is. And they are the ones that confer authority upon the public officials. It is the citizenry, as I just said, who confers authority upon the public officials of a legal system. If the public officials purport to make law beyond the constraints of what the social group whose legal system it is accepts as valid, then the public officials have failed to make valid law. They have not, uh, you know, failed in an obligation, but they have failed to make valid law. That's a very important point to understand. All right. So what exactly was Hart's fatal mistake in the concept of law? So Hart then makes a fatal error, undermining his entire legal theory, an error which the natural law theorist Ronald Dworkin famously recognized and exploited to great effect in Law's Empire. So what Hart does is he alienates the citizenry from their own legal system. He alienates the social group who are the ones who confer that authority upon the public officials of the legal system. He alienates them from their own legal system. Why on earth would Hart do this? Uh, he does it to save the obligatory character of law. He wants there to be an actual legal obligation. Well, he actually wants to understand and he wants to um, represent why it is that most people, most of the time, speak and act as if there were an actual obligation to comply with the law. So he wants to save this obligatory character of law, that you have an actual obligation to comply with the legal rules of, the legal, of your legal system. So Hart believes that this obligatory character only manifests in situations wherein everyone in the social group accepts the social rule. And this is really important. He really does want unanimity or near unanimity. And and he so he really does think that everyone in this, for a social rule to be a social rule of a particular social group, it has to be the case that everyone in that social group takes the internal point of view towards that social rule and accepts it. They accept it. Right? And that means that they think that, you know, that demands and sanctions for non-compliance, demands for non-compliance and sanctions for non-compliance are justified because of the existence of the rule in and of itself. And 
so that's a very it's a very important point he really does demand unanimity or near unanimity okay so why does Hart make this mistake in the concept of law why does he alienate the citizenry whose legal system it is the social group whose legal system it is from their own legal system so Hart recognizes even though in order for a social be rule to be the social rule of a social group, he does demand this near unanimity and acceptance. He also at the same time recognizes that it could never be the case that all members of a social group would accept the social rules comprising their legal system. He, he, he understands this. He recognizes this. That would never happen. What he demands would never happen. That's why he strips the citizenry of their own legal system. He makes the body of public officials the social group whose legal system it is. So these public officials, like I told you that the social group are the ones that confer power upon these public officials and via these secondary power conferring social rules of authority and they then these public officials are empowered to adjudicate to repeal to promulgate and to change the primary duty imposing social rules of obligation of the social group whose legal system it is so Hart alienates the social group alienates the citizenry from their own legal system and then he makes it the legal system not of the social group not of the citizenry but he makes it the legal system of the public officials of the public officials now it's their legal system it's their legal system the reason why he does this is because he thinks then he can get this unanimity of acceptance of the social rules that comprise the legal system and thus become legal rules from these public officials. He knows he cannot get unanimity of acceptance from the entire social group, so he thinks he can get unanimity of acceptance just from these public officials. So he alienates the citizenry, alienates the social group from their own legal system. He says, all I, all I need from them is that they not mutiny, um, and that for most of the time they comply and I don't really care why they comply. They might comply out of fear. They might actually comply out of a sense of moral obligation. He basically just says, I don't really care. That's not my problem. That's not my issue. So, so the body of public officials, now this legal system is their legal system and their legal system alone. So this is nonsensical because it would mean that these public officials confer authority upon themselves and constrain themselves because it was that body of primary duty imposing social rules of obligation of the entire social group that served as sort of the boundary of authority for the public officials because they can they fail to make valid law if they uh, promulgate a law that the social group whose legal system it is would not accept but now we've taken the guardrails off right we've taken those guardrails off so now these public officials if it's their legal system they confer authority upon themselves and they constrain themselves so this really seems quite nonsensical and again as Ronald Dworkin very astutely pointed out nobody even though Hart thinks he's solved his problem he hasn't because Ronald Dworkin, as he famously pointed out in Law's Empire, nobody of public officials accepts their social rules of their legal system devoid of disagreement or dissent. Hart is still not going to get his unanimity of, of, of acceptance of the social rules that he wants and needs. So that's very important to understand. Okay, so we've talked about what Hart's mistake was. We've talked about why he made that mistake. So now we need to talk about how do we fix Hart's mistake. So I believe there is a way to fix Hart's mistake and this is basically the the substance of my entire uh, Yale PhD dissertation. And so I think that we can craft a legal theory that returns a social group's legal system to the citizenry. We can do this and we can still have, I think we can also have um, theoretical disagreement about what the law is and should be 
amongst the public officials and amongst the entirety of the citizenry, the entirety of the social group. I think we can have everything we need and want and that we understand to be part and parcel of a typical legal system that we see out in the world around us. So the solution is to apply what I'm referring to as a modified Lewisian Hartian account of social conventions and to apply this to Hart's legal system. And this is also going to allow for evolution and devolution of legal systems of social conventions. Um, so now according to this count, account what it is to be a social convention is to be a union of a primary duty imposing social convention of obligation and a secondary to power conferring social convention of authority so obviously this sounds this is what makes it hartian is that i am saying that to be a social convention is to be part of a system of social conventions just like for Hart to be a social to be a, for a social rule to be a legal rule was to be part of a system of social rules and for me I'm saying basically the exact same thing about but about social conventions and that's what makes this account Hartian and so we have we are always you know together going to have these primary social conventions of obligation or quasi-obligation and these secondary power conferring social conventions. So authority is always going to be part of our discussion about social coordination. And what I'm ultimately going to say is that all social coordination requires authority. I'm just going to adjust here. And um, yes, that all social coordination requires authority. All right, so now I have much, much more to say about this new account of this new modified Hartian Lewisian account of social con conventions. And what makes it Lewisian is that it's a game theoretical rational choice based account of social conventions, just like Lewis's convention. So, um, I, I say much more about that elsewhere. I don't have time right now to get into it, um, all of the details of this account, but applying this account to Hart's legal system is going to be the solution. And the reason why is because we need to sever. Hart sees there, there being this necessary connection between obligation and unanimity of acceptance. And what we need to do to get all of the features of legal systems and social conventions that we want and need is we have to sever this necessary connection between obligatoriness and unanimity of acceptance, okay? Or conformity. So Hart's necessary connection between obligatory character and unanimity of acceptance is now severed by applying this new account of social conventions. Now. The reason why is because social conventions are step public social goods, which falls out of the fact that they are this union of the power conferring social conventions, secondary power conferring social conventions of authority and primary duty imposing social conventions of, of, of obligation. So it's this, it's this system because it's this system, that's what's gonna make a social convention a step public social good. Because the public officials, the authorities are free riding defectors, and the moment at which the social convention arises, the social group rests upon an equilibrium point. So no one who is party to the convention would wish to unilaterally deviate and no one in the social group would wish them to unilaterally deviate because the social convention would collapse. Therefore, there is something closely akin to an obligation for all social group members party to the convention to continue to conform thereto. So we get our obligatoriness that Hart wanted, but we don't demand unanimity of acceptance because the authorities are the free riding defectors. Does that make sense? So, and then, oh, I guess this didn't take quite as long as I thought it would. So that is how we fix Hart's mistake in, fatal mistake in the concept of law. So because we have severed 
unanimity of conformity or unanimity of acceptance from obligatoriness, now we can have um, disagreement, we can have dissent about what the law is and should be, because we can have sub-social groups that are also step public goods in and of themselves that wax and wane over time, and we've returned the legal system to the citizenry. The citizenry is now again a major player in its own legal system. They are conferring power upon the public officials. They are constraining the authority of the public officials and they are advocating for the evolution. They are they are pressuring, intentionally pressuring the evolution and devolution of their own legal systems. And so that's how we fix Hart's uh, fatal mistake in the concept of law. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, bye.